Hello, I'm Robert Morrison, and today I get to show you one of the premier features of Pasco Capstone, the workbook. In Pasco Capstone, everything's a workbook, so it's a great feature to know a lot about. In front of me, I have an interference and diffraction experiment set up, and I've created a workbook to go along with that experiment. So let's dive right in. As you can see, I've created a title page. It includes an image and some text to let students know that they're in the right experiment. And then I move right into a page of theory. And this has some information about diffraction and gives students an idea of the phenomena that they're going to be studying. After that, I've created a setup page. And as you can see, I have text, I have images, and I even have a video to help them in the setup process and to get the best results. Hi, my name's Andy Spoon. Today I'd like to talk about how to get best results with PASCO's interference and diffraction experiment. After that, I have a data collection page set up. As you can see, the instructions for collecting that data are right next to the display in which you're going to actually collect the data. So let's go ahead and collect some data. I will hit the record button and begin data collection. And then I will sweep across the diffraction pattern. As I'm doing this, you can see that I have the scale of that graph already preset for this particular experiment, so students don't have to muck around with it. And I've already set up the appropriate sampling rate for this particular experiment. Once we've gone through the entire diffraction pattern, I'll go ahead and stop collecting data. And as you can see, if I hover over that graph, I have only one tool available to me. That is the scale to fit button. And that's because I don't want students doing anything else with the, except collecting the data on this particular page. When I move over to the analysis page and I hover over the graph, you'll see the entire array of tools is available to me. But that's not exactly what I want students to see. So let's go ahead and, go and take a look at that particular toolbar. To get it to stay up all the time, I'm going to go ahead and pin it to the top of the display. Once it's there, I can move around the display and it'll always be available to me and visible. Now, what I want to do is remove some of the tools that the students obviously won't be using for this particular experiment. I don't think they'll be using the uh, rearrange button, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off a couple other of the tools to see how they disappear from the top of that toolbar. Once I have the toolbar where I want it, I can lock down that page. And I'll do that using the properties of that page and the lock button. Now every time students come to this particular page, they'll just have the tools that they need for doing the experiment. After that, I've set up a page for conclusions with questions for students to answer and text box set up for them to answer those questions in. Once they have that information available to them, they'll save that and that all that gets saved along with their data in the workbook file. And they can turn that in as an electronic file or they can print that out. After that, I've created an extensions page so that students can go on to study further phenomenon or explore more of this particular phenomenon. When they do that, they're going to be creating their own pages. So let's take a look at doing that. I will add a page to this particular workbook. And as you see, it gets added to the top here along with the other workbook pages. When I save it, I'll get to save that along with those pages in that workbook. I have a series of templates now available to me. And if I go over to the side here, I have a whole palette of displays that I can then drag and drop into that workbook page. But I know that I'm going to be using the same graph that I was using before. So let's go ahead to a page where I've had that graph before. I'm going to select it. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to bring that back and just paste that into the page. And as you can see, it retains the same properties that it had before. It even shows the data that it had previously collected in that particular display. So I don't have to mess around with that. I'm just going to add one more element to this particular page, and that is the text entry box. And that is so my students have a place to describe what they're going to be doing next. And when a student has created this page for themselves, they can then turn this in alongside the other pages they have. The entire thing gets collected in a single workbook. And as you can see, the variety and opportunities here are nearly infinite for the workbook. 
We hope you enjoy using this feature with your students. Thank you for your time.